Hey guys, what's going on today? I'll tell you what's going on. It's springtime in the Pacific Northwest. I've got on my dad's shirt, my dad's shorts, my dad hat, and I'm gonna go out and mow the dad gum lawn because that's all you do for two months in the Pacific Northwest is mow every day of your life if you have more than a postage stamp lot. And we're gonna try it with a new mower we haven't tried before, this Coyote ZXC SE. A big old commercial machine that's way overkill for my purposes, which makes it exactly right for my purposes. Uh, what I'm going to do today is go over the mower real quick, uh, mow with it um, on this shattered hellscape of a lawn that we've got, and then i just give you a brief overview of what I think of it. So this isn't going to be a review on the pavement without touching the grass. I'm going to go out and mow with it, uh, get it stuck probably, pull it out with the tractor, do all sorts of fun stuff. So keep with it. I'll be right back. <laughs> So you can see this grass behind me. We got a lot of grass to do. Uh, so let's just go through the machine real quick, give you a quick idea of what, what we're looking at. Uh, the machine I picked out to use is a commercial machine. Why? Because if I'm gonna mow, I'm gonna use the most expensive thing I can while I get a chance to, because I probably can't afford it otherwise. That's why. Um, a lot of people use commercial machines to mow too. If you got a really big place, the heavier duty the machine, the better. You can buy four residential machines for how long one commercial machine might last. So the fact that the commercial machine maybe costs double, it's a good financial decision. Uh, so I'll show you a couple quick things in here, then we'll get to the real stuff, the mowing. So here's what we got. Look at that shadow. That's what we got. Uh, big old heavy duty forks holding those caster wheels, uh, greasable. We got some lights. I can't figure out how to turn those on. Um, Anti-scalping wheels on the deck. The deck seems pretty thick. Um, at first look, they kind of stitch welded this deck. Uh, I don't know how that'll work over time, but whatever. Uh, you can stand on this deck, which is nice. So you've got a step pad here. And then when you get up into the operator station, another step pad, I think that's a good idea. Everything's rubber here. And like everybody's doing on the market, you can open this guy. <laughs> and get down to your belts. Um, I don't see greasable things on the spindles, but I haven't looked very hard yet, but that might be a thing. I like to see greasable spindles. That's down. Uh, adjustable bales a little bit. And we're gonna get to the seat. That's the last thing. Fuel gauge. Dual fuel tanks on this machine, so you can go four times as long uh, without noticing that you haven't bought yourself gas lately. There's the tank switch. Uh, that's an overflow for the transmissions on this, which I want to talk about. The first thing that'll go out on your mower is your deck, if you don't have a good deck. If you have a good fabricated deck, great. Number two, transmission. So the more you spend on a mower, generally the larger the transmission you get. Uh, that's really important. So this guy runs a Hydro Gear uh, 3400 transmission. The model down that's still considered commercial runs a 3200. Um, anything with a 3100 or above in its name is going to be a commercial transmission. The ones below that, the residential machines, they've got 2800s and 2400s, I think, something like that. They're fine transmissions, just be aware. Th those are generally non-serviceable. If you can't service something, it's going to die, you know. So these ones you can service. The more things you can service, the longer your stuff lasts. So there's the spiel on that. You can't see the transmission, but it's there. Um, engine on this one is a Kohler. Everybody talks about Kawasaki. I'm a Kohler guy. I think Kohlers are great. This is the Command Pro. What's that mean? I don't know. It's got an air, air cleaner up front or up top, and it sounds cool and, you know, whatever. Um, it's easier to service, I guess, and more power. Well, there's the rest of the mower. Flippy, flappy thing that can sit up, even though you're supposed to leave it down. Uh, normal looking tires. They're not too wide, not too tall, not too big. So nothing to write home about there. Um, we do get ROPs on this, which I like, and they're foldable. So going through the barn here, it was very close. I almost didn't make it, but I could have folded the ROPs and been fine. Um, to adjust your deck height, a little spinny guy that you release with your foot. And there's also a lock for it here, so you don't accidentally drop the deck. That's nice. Um, the startup thing I'm going to do is kind of neat. So you go, you put in your secret code. Ours is one two three four then it tells you all systems are go oh but there's nobody in the seat so it's not going to start if you press that button that's kind of cool i like that 
that's thoughtful thanks guys i get frustrated sometimes i can't figure out why the machine won't start so that's neat um last two things handbrake because you know you're driving a sports car uh brake has to be on to start just so you know and then the seat this is a very very comfortable cushy seat this has three inches of ride to it um you can tune it to your weight so i tuned it to 280 even though i'm a svelte two and a quarter right um so that's kind of neat i'm just riding it up here last night over our you know rough uh, farm gravel situation here and through some bumps um it rode nice felt pretty comfortable so i'm excited about that um i'm really getting into these machines that have suspensions and stuff uh, so we'll see how that feels um enough yakking let's go mow some grass dude come on it's grass mowing time now maybe i should mow this grass this is a swamp let's let's try it first see if i get stuck oh here we go Okay, so disaster has struck already. I decided to cut this this uh, tall swamp grass. It was like waist high on a setting of three out of five. And I thought it was just leaving behind a mohawk. Because I overloaded the deck. But no, it seems I found, immediately had found some baling twine and it wrapped around the spindle. Oh my gosh. So I'm going to see if we can get this out. Here we go. center one too <laughs> I got it oh man oh disaster averted look at grass on your little camera that's why I always carry my navy seal knife all right, let's go mow something real, not pasture. Um, let's go out to the front lawn, see what's going on. So here's an overgrow overgrowth. Well, that's what the grass is. Here's an overview of the grass we're going to be growing. Growing, boy, I've got one thing on my mind, which is long grass, because I've been letting this lawn go. It doesn't even have the right to be called a lawn. This place, it's ridiculous. Here you go. My neighbors love me. So what I've got here is I've got a patch where the tractor got stuck. Uh, beyond that is another part where I got the mower stuck. There's a lot of mud out here. Here's some more uh, tank traps. Uh, beyond that, I've got an actually relatively dry area where <laughs> no grass grows. Um, that's the one thing about this place is uh, it's either soaking wet or dry as a bone. There's no in between. Uh, the soil is made of a lot of clay. And this is the fun part. This is by the creek. So we've got some canary grass in here. It's also in mud. It's very bumpy and I left some sticks out here. So, and then on 
the other side of the property we've got the pasture i'll go mow some pasture grass and mow on a hillside and just see how well it holds the hills so here we go time to start mowing <laughs> So we're doing good, but I did get stuck in the tank trap here, uh, mostly because the deck bottomed out. Which I expected, I was going through the deepest part, so the thing actually powered through the other parts without getting stuck, so we're going to get the tractor, pull this thing out, and we'll keep mowing. Okay, well, how to do on this lawn? Pretty, pretty, pretty good. Um, we got stuck one time, which is fine, in the evil tank trap. That thing's uh, about shin deep, so you're gonna get stuck eventually. It did fine. Um, I have had a mower that's powered through stuff like that, even with the deck being hooked, but this thing's a gas mower, it's not a diesel. We're not expecting that. Um, rest of the lawn looks like it's been cut we can get up close here pretty uniform looks good no big windrows um, it throws the grass about six to eight feet not the longest but it throws it um, we mowed over some sticks here big one still plenty of stick pieces but it mowed over them kind of bogged down a bit um, in this area because this area I tried to put drainage in so it's real bumpy like woo, wavy and it bogged down when it was mowing dirt but that's normal but it mowed everything so that's what you need a mower to do is mow stuff um, let's see I'm gonna go put it on a hillside and after that we'll uh, wrap up and be done here well, I'm not gonna be done. I still got like two more acres to mow, but you'll be done. All right, talk to you in a minute. Okay, so hillside mowing, how'd we do? Well, it went up and down the hill fine. That's good, it's a pretty steep grade. 
Um, some mowers have problems with this. I think it's because we have the bigger transmissions. I'm just able to put more power to the ground once they're under pressure. You know, I heard those hydros starting to whine a bit when I'm, you know, really putting the shitspa to them, but they're doing fine. Um, like a normal zero turn, when you're turning at speed uphill or downhill, you're fighting that mower. So um, I didn't wipe out, I didn't skin out, I didn't do nothing. This grass is really dry and beneath it, it's clay, so it's a slick hill. It did fine. So that's nice. Um, overall, what do we think of this mower? Um, I didn't bust the deck when I sunk it in the tank trap. That's good. I like that you can stand on the deck. You know, I don't like a deck that's floppy. Um, the deck bounces up and down when you're going over bumps. Just kind of, kind of, kind of, making an infernal racket. Um, the seat's nice, but there's no real suspension going on here. So eventually everything does get transmitted to the user. So it's nice. It has a nice seat. It's better than my old beater mower. Um, it's comfortable when you're driving down the driveway, but if you're mowing a bunch of bumps, it's going to, it's going to beat you up. That's just how it is. Um, what else did we figure out? Operator station's big, comfortable. Um, I can set this up so where my arms are out at rest, that's the fastest I wanted to go. Um, and you can adjust that by moving the seat and moving the arm, the bales. Um, I did find that this thing either wants to go zero or 100. There ain't a lot of finesse to it. This thing's just a little fire breather, which, you know, I don't mind mowing fast, but when you're trying to finesse stuff, you really were, I felt like I was fighting with the bales. Um, a lot of times making, I think it was a left turn, returning the left stick to neutral. If, well, if I was, yeah, if I was pulling back the left stick, returning it to neutral, I had to push, which is an odd thing to me. Usually the other things like returning to zero, but man, that thing just wanted to keep, keep turning like that. Um, the right stick would do that sometimes too when I was going uphill. Um, so that's my biggest complaint actually, it was like fighting to get out of my turns. Um, it wasn't super tough, but you know, if, if you're not a large person, you, you're gonna have to row really slow, I guess, if you can finesse it to do that. And just, I feel like I'd be worn out at the end of the day as, as an operator. So we're gonna see if we can adjust that. Um, I'll probably do another 50 hour update later. Um, I did figure out how to turn on the lights. There's a button with a light on it. Hey, great things there. Um, I'm going to finish mowing the property. I got to go all the way back there and over there and over there. And Okay, we got her back in the barn. I did a bunch of mowing today. Um, what do we think? Um, the seat's nice. Um, you know, it, it's not super bouncy. It doesn't bottom out a lot. But without any kind of suspension or isolators under the deck, with that front end being stiff, um, you do feel it. You know, you're getting bumped. Um, my body's not hurting. I don't feel like I got in a fight exactly, but sometimes, man, when I was mowing, I was feeling beat up. And the problem is those hydros again in the, the engine, it feels like it's not tuned all that incredibly well. So this thing just goes fast. Zero to a hundred. That's it. There's not a lot of finesse. Like you could go slow, but not very. And so I just I had to mow fast. That's just how the thing wants to go. And so I'm like hitting bumps and getting beat up and almost hitting trees and stuff. And I wasn't trying to do that, you know, uh, when I was not videotaping what I was doing, I was trying to just mow like normal. Um, so the thing's fast. If you want a fast mower, this is, this is your mower. This thing is fast. I mean, I can't imagine mowing with this thing at top speed. I was, I was mowing at maybe three quarters. I mean, top speed, I mean, you can you know, go to the grocery store on that thing and, 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 and keep up with all the cars on the road, probably. Don't do that. That's not, that's not safe. Um, I did go out and do the backfield. I felt like it kind of bogged down a bit on, uh, on thick grass, even when I had it at top height. So today I was mowing at a three setting. I put it up at like above the five, and I bogged down just as much as I did on the three, which was weird to me. And I wasn't trying to mow very fast, which again, you need to be able to mow slow sometimes. So if this thing will only go fast, you're gonna bog down, you're gonna actually be less efficient. So I had to mow over the same places a few times um, out here in the, in the swamp grass area where originally I'd, I'd, I'd gotten uh, that rope around the spindles. And that's another improvement I would make on this mower is you need to have spindle guards between the, 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 the deck and the blades. Other mowers do that so you don't get this stuff wrapped around the spindles um other than that what's the nice stuff 
I kind of like the little button doohickey for starting it up. That's kind of fun. I like that I don't have to have my key with me. I can just memorize the code and, and start my machine. I like that. Um, I like, again, with that computer doohickey, I really like that. Uh, it tells me why the mower won't start. So I'm always like jumping on the mower, trying to start and can't figure out, oh, what's, what's turned on or turned off? So that tells me I like that. Um, it starts easy. Um, when you are at full throttle and you pull your PTO on, instead of slamming into your, uh, your PTO, it actually ramps the PTO up. I like that. That'll save blade, uh, <coughs> excuse me, not blades, but belts over time. So that's a great feature. Um, yeah, so I think Coyote's making a, a great mower there. Um, as for if it's commercial quality, will it stand up to abuse, you know, for, you know, 8, 10, 12 hours a day with multiple users just beating the living tar out of it? I don't know. You know, is it going to put up to your teenager taking it out there and jumping curbs and running into stuff? I'm not sure yet. You know, we'll find that out. Uh, at first blush, it feels like it, but boy, that deck was making a big racket every time I went over a bump. Just kind of blah, blah, blah. So I don't know how the, 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 the stuff holding the deck on is going to hold up. I mean, it was, it was getting beat. <laughs> I was kind of worried about it. But overall, hey, great mower. It mows like it's supposed to. Um, my overall impression is there's nothing that really stands out about it that sets it apart. I think they wanted that seat to do it. But I feel like anybody can put a suspension seat on a mower. Um, I think they wanted the speed to do it. And in many places, the speed does help. Um, just for me, it's not a helpful thing. So I'll mow more with it. And if I do start noticing things that really set it apart, I'll do another video. If I don't, hey, if that's a commercial mower that's available to you and you try it and you like it, it's worth buying. You know, it is a very good mower. And especially if you're using it commercially where maybe you're on gentler properties, I think you would really enjoy this mower. Um, if you're mowing the farm, like a lot of people do with commercial lawn mowers, because they have to have that heavy duty quality. If you can find something that, you know, does, beats you up a little less, maybe do that. Um, you know, this mower is made by a tractor company, Coyote. I think they make some of the toughest, most feature packed tractors in the industry, and they stand out above the competition. Does this mower have that same feature set? I don't think so. I'm not really seeing anything besides the computer doodad, which is probably on another mower for real here, um, that sets it apart. So that's why I'm not just raving about it. It does a good job though for the money. I go out and price them up. They're a pretty good deal. So that's it for now. Um, I'm gonna do some farm stuff like pick apples or muscle a pig or something.